Welcome back. Today we are going through lesson 3-7, which is all about variations. So there are two types of variations we're going to talk about today. The first one is direct variation. Direct variation is where we have the equation y equals something times x, so a constant times x. And this is where y varies directly as x. So what that means in terms of real world situations is as x increases, y increases. So that means that it's going up in both directions. And that is when k is positive. So if we're multiplying by a positive number, then as x increases, y increases. To find that k value, the constant, we take y and we divide it by x. So that's how we find our constant of variation. And this represents the ratio or the slope that the function has. So for example, if we have y equals 2x, that means our constant is 2. So if I plug in some numbers like negative 1, that would give me negative 2 as an output. If I plug in 0, that would give me 0. Um, as 1, if I plug in 1, I get out 2. And if I plug in 2, I get out 4. So we can see that as the x is getting bigger, so is the y. So if I graphed those points, I would have 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4. So it would look something like that. And if that's the case, then the, y inter or the intercepts will always be 0 and 0. So that's direct variation. Then we have what's called inverse variation. So you can see the equation there is k divided by x. So this time we're dividing. That means that y varies inversely as x. So when that happens, it means that as x is increasing, the inverse is happening. So y is decreasing. So to find this constant, we take x times y, and that would represent a product. All right, so again, if we plug in some numbers, let's choose some easy numbers to kind of divide here. So if I plug in negative 4, that would be a negative 1 half output. If I plug in negative 1, I get out negative 2. If I plug in 1, I would get out 2. And as I plug in 2, I would get positive 1. So that it was what it would look like. We can see that as x is increasing, y is decreasing. Okay, so the graph of that, if I go negative 4, negative 1 half, and negative 1 is down at negative 2. And then you should notice what's happening there is there, but then if we go over the positive, so one is at two and two is at one, you can kind of see it coming back down over here. So inverse variation has kind of a crazy graph going on there. For this one, it's gonna have those asymptotes, which are those horizontal and vertical lines that the graph approaches but never touches. Those will be at x equals zero and y equals zero. So those would be the asymptotes there. All right, so some other key things we need to mention. So direct and inverse. If you know one ordered pair in any given variation relationship, direct or inverse, you can find that constant of variation and write the variation relationship. So you can find it with the y over x or the xy, depending on what kind it is, and then write the relationship as an equation from there. We also have joint. So this is where two, or more than two, not two or more, but two more than two, variables are rated, related directly. So for example, we could have an equation, something like y equals k times x times z. So more than two variables going on. That's called joint variation. All right. So combined variation involves a combination of direct or joint variation and inverse variation. So that's where we've got two or more things going in. So an example of that might be y equals kxz, like we just did for joint, and it's got the inverse relationship of divided by y. So those are the three or four, depending on how you count them, types of variation. Let's go through some examples with these. 
So let's start with direct variation here. In example one, we have these ordered pairs. So the first thing we're gonna do is find that constant of variation. Remember that the constant of variation here, to find it, we do y divided by x. So in those ordered pairs, I'm gonna take the y value and I'm gonna divide it by x and see what I get out. So that would equal, since it's a negative to find a negative, it's positive, two thirds. So my constant of variation is two thirds here. Then it says to write the equation. So remember for direct variation, it's the constant times x. All right, let's look at number two. So this one tells us that the variable y direct, varies directly as x, and they're giving us y equals 16, negative 16 and x equals so I'm going to find that constant of variation again. Remember, it's the y divided by the x. So that gives me negative 8 for our k value. And then our equation would look like negative 8x. And then it's asking us to find some y values when we know the inputs. So we would plug those in. So for example, we do negative 8 times negative 1 and get a positive 8 out or we would plug in negative eight times one and get negative eight out. Or we could plug in a two, which would give us a negative 16. So that's just using that equation once we have it to find some values. All right, let's look at number three now. This one tells us um, that these two ordered pairs represent direct variation, and we want to figure out what this x value is. So the first thing I'm going to do is find that constant again, y divided by x. So 7 divided by 2.8. And I know that that same constant should be true for the other ordered pair if they're um, directly related. So that same constant should be the same for both ordered pairs. So when I solve that, I would get 7x equals negative 11.2. And then I would divide by 7 and find that the x value of that point is negative 1.6. Okay, then we have number 4 here, which asks which ones are direct variation. So looking at those graphs, we want to remember from what we wrote down on the front that in order to be direct variation, it's just constant times x. So those have to go through 0, 0. So I can see that this x and y intercept are not 0, 0. E is, C is not, but D is. So those are my direct variation. All right, let's look at inverse variation. So same idea, here's our ordered pairs. Remember for this one, when we want inverse variation to find our constant, we do x times y. So that means I'm gonna multiply these together. So for example, I'm gonna do negative five times 2.4. And when I do that, I get a constant of negative 12 for k. So I can write my equation then as the y, or the k, over x. That would be my equation. Number six is similar, but now they're telling us the y value and the x value, and that it's inverse variation, so you wanna read carefully. This one, to find my k value, I am gonna do the x times the y value, and I'm gonna get 84, my constant there. So my equation is 84 over x. And then again, we're plugging some values in. So we can do 84 divided by 5 to start with. That's going to give me 16.8. So when the input's 5, the output's 16.8. I can do 84 over 10. That's going to give me an output of 8.4. And I can also do 84 over 16 and get an output of 5.25. So using that equation to find some key values there. All right, for number seven, this one, again, we have our ordered pairs. We wanna find that constant so that they're the same. So I'm gonna multiply y times x. 
And I want that to be the same for both ordered pairs. So y times x equals y times x. So when I solve that, I get 0.8 equals 8x. Divide by 8 on both sides. And I can see that the x coordinate that should go with 8 is 0.10. All right, and then for number 8, let's sketch a graph if the constant of variation is 4. So remember that that means we're doing 4 divided by the x value. So let's plug in some x values that we might want to know about, or it would be easy to find. So 4 divided by x, let's start with something kind of easy. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So I can plot that point. Um, 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. So I can plot that point and start to get an idea of what that curve look, looks like. So I can see that this left-hand side is curving like that. And then let's try some positive values. So let's try um, something easy, one. So four divided by one is four. Four divided by two is two. So I can plot those points. And then let's do one more just to make it easy. So four divided by eight is one half. So I can see that it's getting smaller out here and my curve is going like this. So that is our inverse variation. We're going to practice now a little bit more with joint and combined. So remember, joint variation it means that there's more than two variables going on here. So this says that the variable y varies jointly as x and z. So that is also telling us that y equals negative 108, x is negative 4, and z is 3. So to find my equation, I have to figure out what k is. So my equation is k times x times z. And so we're going to solve that. So if I divide the x, z out, I can solve for k by doing the y value divided by x times z. So that would be negative 12 there when I multiply those together. And when I simplify that, I get 9. So the k is 9. That means my relationship is y equals 9xz. So then they tell you an x and a z value to plug in. Let's figure out what our output is. So that's 9 times 6 times negative 2. And when I simplify that, I get negative 108. All right, let's look at some combined variation now. So for combined variation, we have, remember, joint and inverse going on. So in this case, y varies jointly as x and z. So that means that in my equation, I'm going to have k times x, z, and inversely with w means I divide by w. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to plug things in, and we're going to try and solve for that k, that constant. So we have k times x, which is 3, and z, which is negative 2. And we're dividing by w, which is negative 4. So when I go to solve that equation, I get, let's see, negative 6 over negative 4. I'm going to go ahead and reduce. So that's going to be 3 halves k. And then when I solve that, I get that k equals 2. So there's my constant. Now we can write our equation 2xz over w. And then I can plug in the values they give me here to find the output. So y is 2 times x times z. And we're dividing by that w value. So when I simplify that, I get negative 21. All right, last thing we're going to look at is some applications here. So trying to think about some real world situations and deciding are things going increasing, decreasing, what's happening here. So the first one says the number of dollars you make varies how with the number of hours you work. So the number of dollars I make increases when the hours works increases. So that means that this is direct variation. In example 12, the temperature in our house varies how with the amount of 
time the air conditioner is running. So the temperature is going to go down the more time the air conditioner has been running. So those are opposite of each other, which means that it is inverse variation. Example 13, the length of the sides of the squares varies how with the perimeter. So if I think about the longer the sides get, the bigger the perimeter gets. So that means they are directly varying because they're both increasing. Your GPA may vary how with the number of hours you watch TV. So making some assumptions here, but if you're um, watching more TV, your GPA may go down. So that would be an inverse variation. And then lastly, we have the area of a triangle varies how with its base and height. So there's two things going on here, which means that I have an X and a Z going on based on my Y. And so when I have those two, that's joint variation. All right, that's all for variation. We'll see you next time.